It's kind of wild to me that neither of you are California kids because <laughs> you you like very much like have the California. You keep using the word vibe. That's like my favorite word. And yeah. I use it constantly to the point where like my high school kids are like making fun of me now for saying it. <laughs> but I'm always yeah. like, oh, the vibe was weird. So yeah. uh, but you guys, yeah, you definitely like if you told me you were born and raised in Ohio, I'd be like, I get it. <laughs> Welcome to Talk Tennis. I am so excited today. This is one of my favorite brands. I'm wearing the hat. I'm always wearing the hats. I have another one just in case like this one didn't match. But today we're going to talk with Ace the Moon, which that means Josh and Dina. You guys are here to tell me all about the brand, all about yourselves, all about all the amazing things. Welcome to Talk Tennis. Thank you so much, Michelle, for having us. So I guess first things first, who are you guys? Give me your background. How are you tennis players? How is tennis relevant in your life? Talk to me. Dina, we will go ladies first. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> um, so I've been playing tennis. I actually, I wish I could put up a picture, um, but I was basically born with a plastic racket or like in my crib. Yes. Um, huge part of my family. Uh, my mom is 80 years old and still plays doubles and singles and um, every other day. So it, it's just always been part of our DNA growing up. Um, I'd say when I was about eight, I got really into it. Uh, I'm the youngest of three kids and I wanted to separate myself from the other two and their hobbies. And I knew my mom would be out playing all the time and she dragged me along to the park. And I just, I wanted to kind of, you know, emulate her a little bit, but also I, I loved the sport and I wanted to make it my own. When my sister was a gymnast, my brother was into music. So, you know, how can I have my own thing um, as the youngest child? So I'd say since eight, I've been playing. I'm also not professionally trained because it's kind of stubborn also. So my mom taught me how to play. <laughs> my uncle, who was number one in New York um, in high school, uh, he played at Temple um, University in Philadelphia. Um, so he would teach me as well. And then just started uh, you know, playing in high school and just having coaches teach me there. And I loved it. I played softball also. Um, it was pretty much considered better at softball than tennis. And then, uh, again, like I said, any holidays, uh, family events, it was always around a tennis court. Um, and then I went to college and uh, was playing softball. And my freshman year, uh, got benched, did not like that because oh. I was a freshman. <laughs> and then uh, I was, would play tennis on the side with friends and the tennis coach saw me playing and said, hey, you're pretty good. Do you want to try out next year for the team? It was Division Three. I went to Brandeis University. A lot of my friends were on the team and I said, why not? And I made the team and uh, quit softball because the softball coach said, maybe you don't want to come back. And wow. <laughs> I just felt that tennis, I, I aligned more with a lot of the tennis players. It just was more of a community that I was more familiar with. Um, and, you know, I, I would say that because I wasn't, uh, as a child, you know, professionally trained and in clinics and I, I kind of was just having fun with it mm -hmm. and kind of gave me that levity to succeed. And I had competitive edge, but I also didn't take it too seriously because it, it wasn't something that I was in college to do. Um, but it really became kind of a defining moment of who I am. And when people would say, oh, Dina Stern, they're like, oh, the tennis player. Oh, she loves tennis. And then I was fortunate enough to work at USA Network for many years, which was airing the US Open um, that, as the you know premier uh, broadcast provider of it. And I had the opportunity um, in the marketing department to be at the USTA Tennis Center every day during wow. the US Open. And I think then it really just catapulted, you know, my interest and passion for tennis. Um, living in New York was really hard to play tennis and really expensive um, to get court time and just the accessibility is not as great. And then I moved to California about 11 years ago and just it's kind of changed my life with being able to play tennis and balance it with, um, you know, my career, which is in um, uh, entertainment. Um, so I've worked for you know, many of the top media companies currently at Fox. Um, and it's just a great release and a, and a great way to kind of escape. It's my meditation. And so that's a little bit of, of my background in tennis. I love that. That's awesome. 
Josh, what about you? That's that's going to yeah. be hard to top. <laughs> well, I was well, I'm thinking- also get. It, I'll also say that you know being in the same city with Josh also has helped my tennis game. So it's given me you know, having someone that matches my passion for it has really been a great experience and has elevated my interest in the in the sport. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always tell my mom like the best thing she did was like give me tennis lessons. Um. You know, probably right around the same age as Dina, at at around eight years old, I started playing tennis in Trumbull, Connecticut, um, and it just stuck with me. I was always playing sports as a kid, and I'm really probably the same person I was when I was eight years old, always wanting to, you know, be outdoors, being, you know, playing tennis or hiking, being on the beach, um, you know, all of the above. I like Dina was never a competitive player, um, you know, or ultra competitive player. I played high school, uh, won a couple state doubles championships. Um, I, myself in the back. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because I know right before the recording, we were just talking about, you know, you and coaching mm-hmm. at high school and college. And I have such fond memories of my high school tennis coach who was a woman. Razan Zia is her name. I haven't reached out to her in years and years, but it's funny. I was just home in Connecticut and was looking at our high school tennis team photo. Um, it was like a state championship uh, plaque, basically. And I was, I'll send you this, I'll send you it afterwards. But yeah. um, anyway, I was right next to my tennis coach and she was just, she was just the greatest woman. She's so chill. Um, kind of gave everybody freedom and, and, and and we, we had a great, we had an amazing team. I mean, the kids, small team in Connecticut, um, you know, we had a a bunch of kids that ended up going out and playing, you know, D1, D2 tennis from a small high school in Connecticut. Wow. Um, you know, one of my friends at Imposter was James Blake's hitting partner and still his, his closest friend. For years, Evan was number one singles all four years. That was the caliber, you know, on the tennis team. And, um, you know, college years, I didn't, I played rec and sort, you know, I I went to a big school. I went to Indiana University. Mm. Um, Those years, I definitely was not focused enough to be on a college tennis team. Just wasn't in the right, you know, wasn't in that right mindset. So, but you know, it's always stuck with me. I lived in the city for a long time. Also, like Dina, so hard to play, so hard to get court time. There's very few courts. There, it was a hundred, hundred fifty dollars every time you stepped on a court. Dang, in New that's York City. crazy. <laughs> yeah, and um, you know, but fortunately, I met a whole bunch of guys. We had a court in Chelsea, which is a neighborhood in, in Manhattan every Sunday for years. So we had this same court from nine to 11 o'clock, mm. a little early on a Sunday morning. <laughs> but once we got there, it was great, you know, and, and a little secret about that. I was part of that group years before. And one of the only women what? to be in that group. <laughs> and then I moved and they brought other people in. So anyway. Oh my gosh. Totally. Yeah. But since living, since moving out here, I moved out here about four years ago. Um, it's been just incredible. I mean, again, LA, we were just talking about this also, not perfect, but the tennis here is pretty amazing. Pretty high level and like everyone's into it. Yeah. Year round, whether, you know, free or very cheap to play, you know, maybe it's eight or $11 to book a court. Um, So it's been amazing. I feel like my tennis game now at 46 years old is better than it was when I was in high school. Um, so it's, it's been awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. And like, we always say, especially on the coaching side, as long as like you have started this sport at a younger age and you're still playing it as an adult, like that's kind of the goal is like, I have even said with the girls that I coach, if they're in their thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, and they're like, yes, I had so much fun playing tennis and now I'm playing still. I'm that's awesome. I love that. Totally. Yeah, I feel like, and you know, now since we're in this kind of space, um, you know, we're meeting a lot of people that were very competitive players at younger ages or, you know, playing 
competitively now. Like we just designed sweatshirts for the University of San Diego girls tennis team, and you know, become friendly with a couple of that their you know a couple of them, and you know, hopefully at when they reach their forties, they're going to be playing a lot. But it seems like a lot of them burn out, yeah, you know, get injured, and you know, it's just when you're playing competitively, uh, it just it it's a different element than for us, like Dean and I, who just want to play leisurely. Um, well, and I I want to connect the dots and see how you guys met, but before we even get there, like that's something about your guys's brand for me. It's super nostalgic. I was born and raised in SoCal, like in the 80s, grew up with this. And like, what? Like this hat is something I would have worn when I was 13 or 14 and I'm obsessed with it. But like, you're bringing the fun to tennis and tennis can be so serious and you have to dress properly and wear the colored neck and like all this. And it's like, finally, it's like, you guys are like doing something so different and I love it. So we're awesome. going to get into that. But if you want to connect the dots, how did you guys meet? How did this brand start? Tell me. Uh, funny enough, we did meet on a dating app. Yes. Um, we, <laughs> yeah, we met on Hinge. Um, and I was still living in New York. Dina was here in LA. We realized we had, I don't know, maybe like 100 mutual friends on oh Facebook and whatnot. <laughs> and we, you know, we just became best friends. Um, I ended up living with Dina before I found my place in Santa Monica. She was gracious enough to let me stay in her place and, you know, in exchange for some, some tennis lessons now. But, <laughs> but, um, and uh, we just, you know, a, a, just a great friendship just blossomed. Um, and to this day, you know, Dina's my, my closest friend here. And you, you, you said it well. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I just think it shows a connection on like how tennis, like right away, we, we talk about tennis and just how that there is a certain kind of person, I think, especially if you're in the, like us, more lifestyle, just wanting to hit, not take yourselves too seriously. Mm-hmm. It is really those connections in life too. And yeah. that's something like those values that we share just as people, not just tennis players is kind of live in the moment. And you know, be in the moment on and off the court. So I think that that's you know how how the friendship and now business partnership has kind of blossomed and taken off. Yeah. So obviously you guys are fast friends. Good. You know, like you're each other's people. Like for the goods and the bad. So how did the idea of cool, trendy tennis stuff come? To, how did Ace the Moon come about? How long has it been around? Because I remember the first time we ever saw it on. Tennis Warehouse or at Tennis Warehouse because fun story. Have you guys been up here to the, our offices in Slow? Yeah. Oh, you have to. It's Ooh. not that far. We'll, know, we you'll there. love we, it. We've been to Slow a few times, but just not up to, uh, to the uh, offices. The headquarters. Well, so Marion, our apparel buyer, when she brings in a collection or she's considering bringing something in, she will pu- put everything up on her wall in her office. So anyone that's walking by, we have clear windows on a lot of the offices. So you walk by and she loves like feedback. And I was like, what is that? So yes, tell me the origin story of Ace the Moon, how long you guys have been around. Yeah, so, um, so you know, I was pitching um, Swing pretty hard and trying to get that open, really trying to make it into more of a national concept. Um, And then I couldn't really get it going in New York, which was a blessing in disguise because I kind of wanted to get out of there anyway and it was California dreaming. (laughs) So I I literally drove cross country in the end of 2019, pulled into Dina's driveway and for a few months, a couple months, we were trying to get it going here in LA, we mm-hmm. put together a great group of people, um, you know, within the racket paddle sport world and then COVID hit. So we kind of shelved it. We had no idea that pickleball was going to be as hot mm-hmm. as it is today. It's crazy how it's exploded. And mm-hmm. we always say like, wow, we were like really ahead of that curve and, for whatever reason, it didn't like the actual club concept didn't happen for us. But mm-hmm. Ace the Moon came out of that, which would have been our pro shop 
within the club. We really wanted to do something different than the average tennis shop that you would see. Um, you know, we were playing a lot of tennis on the public courts and still are playing a lot of tennis on the public courts in LA. Mm -hmm. And we noticed like most players were wearing, you know, vintage tees, oversized tees, concert, you know, t-shirts, things like that. And we wanted to bring in that, like you said, that SoCal vibe, <laughs> and that cool vibe with the sports that we love. And yeah. go ahead, Dean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and even playing on the public courts, even during COVID, going, traveling, mm -hmm. um, you know, across Southern California and even Northern California, um, and just getting a little bit of a vibe on courts all over. Uh, mm -hmm. And just finding, you know, our favorite courts anywhere we were traveling to, but going to some gift shops and, and seeing what trends were in lifestyle and how the appreciation for beach and mountains and desert can really, you know, all of those design looks and feels and vibes can be translated into tennis. And it's stuff that we both appreciate. Um, and it's always hard to really find substantial quality, unique gifts for people who like tennis, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm looking for my mother or my sister, or anyone that I'm friends with, you know, you see, you know, the, the traditional classic cross rackets or, um, yeah. you know, all, all of that Etsy looking, mm -hmm. Amazon looking things. And mm -hmm. those are things I don't want to put on my walls, um, <laughs> right? So how can we build and bring quality, bespoke, artistic product that are almost one of a kind and not mass marketed to tennis enthusiasts and, and, and fans. Mm -hmm. um, so it really fits into a unique aesthetic and design where you want to put something up on your walls in your house or on a coffee table um, or even wear it. And, you know, again, like Josh was saying, we would see people just being very casual on the court. I've always been the kind of player I, I call some people equipment girls, I would call them if I'd mm -hmm. go to tennis camps and they're in their cute outfits. And this is way before all the Lululemon and Aloe and all the brands are jumping on the bandwagon. But, you know, they walk in and you look and they've got their bags and you think that they're going to be 5-0 players and they're like a 2-5. And yeah. it's great. I applaud <sighs> anyone who gets out on the court and whatever makes you play better, go for it. But I would feel like I'm there in a t-shirt and like shorts and they're looking at me like, who is this like <laughs> person? Why doesn't that apply? And then when you're at a tennis camp and I'm put in the, you know, four or five group. So it was, um, you know, to, to that end, we really wanted to appeal to the people like us. And then, you know, we wanted to be casual off the court. So how can we really bring all of that together in a kind of, you know, that was the easiest thing is the pro shop that we were going to build do it ourselves, right? Yeah. Like, let's just create a few products. Let's test it. Let's get, and I know we'll maybe talk about the designers and, yeah. and let's just bring what's in our heads and put it into, on, uh, onto, you know, apparel and yeah. let's just test it and take that chance. There, you know, during COVID, we, that's all you could do was really like right. live your life and take chance and, you know, don't be afraid of any risks. No, I love that. And the brand, it definitely is so unique. No one else is like, there's, you can't see anyone else doing stuff like this. And it's super fun. And I am curious about the designers. Do you guys have, are you the designers? Do you have designers that work for you? I just uh, took a peek at the sweats that are so cute that have the ball score yeah, keeping. Yeah. I'm like, of course, those are awesome. Yeah. But I would we'll never think you. of that. We'll yeah, we'll send you one. Oh. So first, you know, we, we looked at when we would go shopping and gift shops and see artists um, that we liked that maybe we're making uh, posters or pottery. Um, and we just looked at other brands that we liked to see what they were doing. And we came up at, in the beginning with a roster of artists to work with, to collab with. So we just reached out and they're like, yeah, That's we'd awesome. love to do it. Whether they were print designers or pattern designers. Um, so that was kind of one area of the supporting, you know, local artists, supporting artists all over the world. And then we did have, you know, uh, Josh had a relationship with a creative direct designer um, that 
that you know he had met and we she was great and she understood our vibe wasn't a tennis player which sometimes is better right because right then you yeah get inside your head mm -hmm. because we, we're there with our creative um you know so I, i'll let josh talk about the rest of the designers and how we brought in some other people along the way yeah i mean and it's been awesome i mean we love we love working with all of our artists, um, always looking for new artists. Yeah, all the ideas kind of come out of our our heads. Like even this, like this shirt, or uh, we'll let's talk about your hat for a second. That's a good ball. So I teach. I also teach a little tennis. There's a, a teacher, a, a longtime coach here. His name's Pete Fox. Every time I would hit with him, he says that phrase. That's a good ball. That's a good ball, Josh. That's good. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's put that on a hat. The amount of times a day I say that phrase, you, I mean, like I would be rich if I had a penny <laughs> every time. Yeah. And, but the yeah. funny thing is I have to just quickly say the side note is if you're a tennis player, you get it. But if you're not, you don't, which makes it even cooler to me because I'm like someone in the running world said, saw it and it was like, oh, that's dirty. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> But also, it's a little sassy. <laughs> well, listen, most, most, if not all of our slogans have a double meaning, you know, <laughs> usually on the court, off the court. Maybe sometimes they could have a triple meaning. Like this T-shirt, this is the L.A. Bagel T-shirt. And, you know, getting bageled in, in tennis is getting beaten 6-0. And the thought came to me where it's like, OK, let's. Like, where do we go eat a great bagel in Santa Monica you know, or like just the west side of L.A. after we go play tennis? Yeah. And like, let's map it out like more like a concert tee. And Carly, our designer who designed this, who doesn't want any credit at all with anything she does. Uh, <laughs> side note. But she got it right away. And we took elements of sort of that New York magazine or, you know, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. font. And we came out with a with a hit T-shirt. We're still. We, I just shipped um, a dozen of these to a tennis shop in Naperville, Illinois. Um, you know, we're. It's been one of our best selling T-shirts to this day, two years in. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So it's just the thoughts keep coming, and you know we love it when other people give us ideas. Uh, like for we were just you know we just did the San Diego Open last month. And we were, it was awesome. We were a vendor there. It was our, our, our biggest event that we've done. Um, and, you know, we met some awesome people, one of which this girl, Riley, um, is now designing some really cool designs for us, like Hawaii type themes with tennis. And it's just, you know, you never know what, you know, or where you know, this, this brand and ideas are going to take us. That kind of leads me to though, there's two things. I love that on your website, you guys have vintage finds and they're like one of one, like legit nostalgic, like USTA tournaments and like, um, t-shirts from they're just vintage shirts. That's really cool. Uh, who are you just collecting those or are those from your past? Like, how did that even come about? We're sourcing those from a lot of different places it could be friends um dean and i two weeks ago we actually went up to ventura there's a lot of thrift shops up mm -hmm. there we couldn't find anything <laughs> you know we're going to goodwills thrift shops i'm gonna have to dig through my uh my stash of shirts i've never gotten rid of <laughs> yeah because when you're younger and you like go to those tournaments, like I remember being a kid and playing like sectional zonals, like the the special ones and like the really cool. There used to be a tournament in Anaheim connected with Disney. So the shirts were always really cool, like stuff like that. You kind of like keep it. Yeah. yeah. But but then I'm like thinking also like somewhere in my collection, I have like my very first concert shirt, which is like Rod Stewart from like 1992. So now I'm like excited to like do a little deep dive. Wish I had all my Sergio Tacchini sweats. Oh yeah! Oh my back gosh! Back in the '90s, and I was a big fan of Stefan Edberg and Yvonne Lendl, and they were really mm -hmm. the first with Adidas to like have their shirts with the SE. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely aging myself, and kind of Argyle <laughs> and that weird animal that Yvonne Lendl had in his. Mm -hmm. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, and it's all coming. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we are that age where it's like all coming back around. So like all that yeah. stuff is definitely back on trend. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's crazy, but I love it. Um, also, so I, I'm i obviously Californian. Californian, that sounds so... F only someone from California would say that. Um, but very like, mm, yes, I'm a California girl. Yes, I love the vibes. But you're mentioning, and I know that your brand is all over the country. Um, talk to me a little bit about like how it's done really well in places that maybe don't have a beach and sunshine and 70 degrees all year. Yeah, you know, we're, we're expanding our footprint. Obviously, most of what we do is online through basethemoon.com. But we, we do have a wholesale arm and started with Tennis Warehouse. We're now in, um, you know, I would say a couple dozen tennis shops and, nice. and clubs uh, throughout the country. Texas has been awesome. Um, we just did like a custom collab with, a, with TC. There's a tennis shop at Texas Christian University's campus. Oh, those courts Ashland. are amazing, first of all. Oh, yeah, I got to get down. Yeah, we got to get down. Amazing, yeah. And that's Hopefully, one of the things that's going to come from this business is like we could now go visit yeah. you know, everybody that we're, you know, we're, we're in business with. So, yeah, Texas has been amazing. Um, Illinois, we, uh, again, Naperville um, Tennis Club is a new client. Um, we are getting into some shops in, in the Scottsdale area. Uh, Florida, we're in a couple places. Um, what, what am I missing, Dina? You know, also, like we're doing like custom collabs. That's cool. Which is the, which is another really cool thing that didn't initially think of, but you know, a lot of people are approaching us. If you're a, a tennis coach, or you know, you have a team, maybe not sponsored by Nike or something like that, but you want to do. You know, you want to do some designs for your team or, or you're an influencer. Like we mm -hmm. speaking of Texas, we just did these really fun t-shirts for uh Will Buchik, who's uh runs a blog called The Tennis Tribe. Mm -hmm. He's awesome. We came up with the idea because he's a double strategist to do mm -hmm. this graphic that says down the middle solves the riddle and put our joint logos on the, the sleeve. And, you know, we, we made it live last week um, and, you know, it's, it's been great so far. People nice. are loving them. Um, so we want to do more of those. If, Love that. You know, if your audience, if people are looking for their own designs for their own tennis brand, um, you know, or personality, we could, we could make that happen. Well, and Will's one of our affiliates, so we love to hear that. And we could connect you with a few others that I think could uh, be a good connection that would drive some interest. There's a few I'm thinking of right now that would probably um, possibly even take the brand global, if I can say that. So <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll connect you guys offline. But yeah, that's cool. And. Yeah, yeah. It's that time of the year, which is wild, but it's the holiday season, or at least in, in our world, holiday is like ramping up and you guys have unique things that you already mentioned this, Dina, but like even myself as a high school coach, I was just looking to buy gifts for my seniors and it's like you do the Google like tennis player gift and you just get the monogram and the, you know, yeah. like the... <laughs> the earrings yeah. and like you're like okay no eh, eh, not for me but like this is something different and unique and you guys also have a whole line of like more gift like house home mm -hmm. cool things items on your website which is also very unique and different so i love that and if you want to hit more on that feel free to give a shout out to that stuff yeah i mean you know well my uncle who was number one in new york and played at temple is also um, who's married to my aunt, who's a potter, and he's oh, also cool. a potter. Okay. And they uh, live in upstate New York, and they founded, along with my uncle's brother, um, one of the largest juried arts and crafts fair um, on the East Coast behind so Rhinebeck. Cool. Um, so I, I kind of grew up, even though I grew up right outside the city, you know, very metropolitan area, there's kind of that um, upstate 
kind of bohemian earthiness mm-hmm. um, me and my family. And I just was always inspired by the, going to these arts and craft fairs and seeing the, the workmanship that all these artists were doing. Um, and that's where a little bit of some of the pottery and the housewares that we were looking at. I actually asked my aunt and said, hey, can you do a collection with us? This is what we love. And she's like, ah, you know, she's kind of retired from that. Now she just teaches pottery. And she's like, I don't know how I'm going to ship it to you guys. It's going to be too <laughs> hard. Anyway, so that's where we kind of went at, went on to Instagram and TikTok and to find other um, ceramic artists that had some of the same kind of vibe that we did. Okay. Um, but that's a little bit of kind of that bespoke, making it a little bit more bohemian, creative, artistic mm-hmm. theme rather than like we were talking about with the earrings and everything else. And <laughs> yeah. I wear a pair of earrings. I should have had them on now. I don't. But um, where they just have like, they don't look like tennis, but they're green and they have a diamond and it looks like a half a tennis ball. So if someone said that, like your earrings, I can say, oh, they're tennis inspired, even though I don't think that the jewelry designer intended that. <laughs> but I think that's it. But really like being a little bit more abstract about it and not mm-hmm. in your face with like a racket or a tennis ball right. and things like that. So we re- that's what we wanted to, you know, besides the apparel and the home goods, just give that vibe to things. And the name too, you know, our name Ace the Moon. Everyone will say, like, well, we haven't discussed that, like, why that name? Yeah. And um, there's something, so, you know, for someone who lived in Ojai, right, which means yeah. the moon, um, <laughs> you know, there's something so strong and um, during a full moon, right, when you just see in the craters and just the, the, uni- the universe and the pull of, you know, kind of this celestial world we live in. And it really is just so beautiful and it's round like a tennis ball. And <laughs> it just kind of clicked with us, like, what can we do that's moon inspired, sun and moon and things like that and ace, which is always a great word. So that's how we combined it. But then we wanted all of our products to kind of fit within that same kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, you know, the not too spiritual, but really just <laughs> the outdoorsiness. Um, and it's the same moon that people will see all over the world. Right. Yeah. So we do have that common, you know, everything that we share with tennis is shared with, with that one moon that someone, you know, across the world is going to see too. It's kind of wild to me that neither of you are California kids because <laughs> you, you like very much like have the California, you keep using the word vibe. That's like my favorite word. And yeah. I use it constantly to the point where like my high school kids are like making fun of me now for saying it. <laughs> but I'm always yeah. like, oh, the vibe was weird. So, yeah. uh, but you guys, yeah, you definitely, like if you told me you were born and raised in Ohio, I'd be like, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, it's you. cool. Well, I kind of looked up New York ish. So we stopped oh, in Ohio very similar. Yeah. That's awesome. You're taking yeah. like the the so the California cool and like you've yeah. got your still your I I hear I hear the accent, so a little of the <laughs> East Coast like yeah. business lady getting her stuff yeah. done. Yeah. exactly awesome okay well we oh this has been so fun learning about you guys and the brand and i'm like super excited to keep watching and seeing what everything is going like what new stuff is going to come out it's i just had we do like a play tester picks um pretty often and on our website and i know i sent you the guys the one the vlog that i did and i had this hat on but i had to do picks for our website last week and i put the beanie on and it's just like always something different i i'm one of those players that like i never want to show up looking like anyone else so i kind of have you know we all kind of make it work for us um but what can we expect um in the next few months from you guys and yeah where's the brand going sweatshirts 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 they're so in right now. I could live in a crew for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, we love it. We've made so many great connections here in LA. I mean, that's one of the best things about being here is the garment industry. We're dying in awesome colors, we, you know, sweatshirts, we're patching, sewing. Yes. Uh, and doing really, really awesome things to the, our clothes and elevating the clothing, especially, um, to, to get it to that next level of like, this is my go-to hoodie. This is my go-to crew neck to wear year round. 
Um, it's affordable. It's not three hundred dollars. And yeah, that's that's a lot of what we're doing. No, I you know I think do more of what we're we're doing, but also see from our customers um, what what's I'm a marketer, so obviously data <laughs> research. I'm looking at that, but you know also see what's popping and then playing off of just overall trends in the in the fashion business yeah. um, and lifestyle business and, and what's going on there, playing off of any of the colors. Um, we want to obviously always align to colors of Grand Slams, which is always fun. Um, but even seeing, you know, what, you know, we don't want to look at any of the, the bigger Adidas, Nike, any of that, but how can we be complementary mm-hmm. to anything that the other brands are doing in the industry? You know, like the aloes and the Lululemons and Lucky and Love. You know, there's so, there's just so many um, yeah. because we're just different. Like you said, there's there's no one like us really out there. Yeah. Um, so how can we? We don't want it to have to be mutually exclusive. Wear your tennis skirt if you don't want to wear shorts. You know, wear the cute dress. But then, how can you make it your own with some of our products to give it that little bit of an that little bit of that vibe or that mm-hmm. SoCal edge to it? And not yeah. not too Chrissy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll add to that also just, you know, outside of the apparel production and products, we're also doing a lot of events. And we have our first tennis tournament next weekend. I saw that. Uh, yeah, at Vermont Canyon, which is beautiful. It's part of Griffith Park on the east side of Los Angeles. Um, there's a set of courts like literally within the canyon. Uh, beautiful setting. We're calling it the East Side versus West Side tournament. And no, you know, keeping with our fun, not stressed out vibe. There's no matches. There's nobody serving. It's just all fun games. Nice. You know, like King of the Court and Live Ball, Triples. Oh, you know, my gosh. All the really fun stuff that you're playing with your, you know, your students. This is like you my know. dream. That's what I want to do all the time. Totally. <laughs> Because we realized, like, you know, it's interesting to see what these other brands and this space that we're in now, some people gravitate towards only events, some people, you know, or so anyway, we, we kind of, for whatever reason, focused a lot on our products initially, um, you know, for the first couple of years. But now we're kind of like, well, we need to really build a community and get our faces out there more. Um, show that we're we're good tennis players, and we love, you know this is this is what we this is why we created this brand because we love tennis. Yeah. Um, well, so I was yeah. gonna say it definitely shows, and just hearing you guys talk about it, and you guys for sure are tennis players through and through. You can tell. Well, thank you. Thank you. the compliments are just <laughs> rolling. In. <laughs> Um, well, and I heard your forehand is amazing, so I haven't seen it yet, but... It. <laughs> backhand, well, yeah. It's funny, I'm getting compliments on my... I never got compliments on my backhand up until recently. We, yeah, we played the other day. This guy was like, wow, your backhand. Because I, I never had a one-hander uh-huh. before I moved out here. And I was like, I think I could do that, you know? <laughs> like, just watch some Roger Federer. Right, stand, exactly. The, you know, YouTube videos and... All of a sudden, I had a I have a one hander backhand now that I never had, and it's yeah. So, just want to get out there more. Um, you know, we want to do more events. We want to we want to do more of the the bigger opens. We're hopefully doing Delray um, in February. We just had a call with Atlanta and Dallas. Oh, nice for their events. You know, because after San Diego, we were like, wow, this was awesome. People really. Were gravitating to us. Granted, it was a very SoCal, you know, San Diego SoCal vibe. Yeah. Um, but that should translate all over the country. Um, and we're hoping, you know, we could start doing some bigger tournaments. Uh, you know, being sponsors at Charleston and Atlanta, Dallas, hopefully Indian Wells. But we'll see. You know, or do some sort of pop up within. Striking distance, you know, tennis ball throwing distance of any miles. Nice. We should talk about that too. Oh my gosh. Well, there's, there's a connection that you guys have that like, 
I don't know the whole story. I lived in the desert for a few minutes <laughs> in between all the things. Um, but the courts on Instagram, I've never been there, but like, and I know it's like in the middle of Borrego Springs or something like, but that's that you guys align perfectly. And like, that's what I want to create in my life is like this amazing place that tennis players just want to come and hang out, play some tennis, have some fun and yeah. chill. And that's what that looks like, but I've never actually been. We've been, yeah. It's it's fun. Just, it's fun. It's, it seems yeah, fun. I mean, they're doing they're doing all the. I mean, it's awesome what they're doing. And, yeah, uh, we'd and love to do something similar in, in, in down the road if we could um, find the way. We gotta find you guys a spot up here. There's a few courts. <laughs> Come okay. do a collab we'll with. Do that. Yeah. 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 That'd be awesome. I'm in my car right now. I know. Let's go. <laughs> well, and yeah, yeah. I mean, the tennis world is only so big. We're all connected, so I'm sure we'll, right, we yeah. can figure something out. Yeah. 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 Um, one more question before I let you guys go. Uh, who's the coolest person that you've seen wearing your gear? Like, I'm sure there's been like some really awesome people. Like, not that we're like clout chasers here, but like, I'm sure there's been some pros. I'm sure there's been some celebrities. Who's wearing, who's, who do you, who have you seen? We have potentially a celebrity that will be wearing something of ours in a new show that's coming nice. out on Peacock. Uh, and luckily I used to work with people at Peacock uh, back in the day with NBC Universal. So hopefully we can get a preview of it. That's um, cool. But we got an order for a Rose Avenue paddle and tennis um, sweatshirt um, and, and we had no idea. And then we get a uh, release from NBC Universal asking if they can use our product in one of their shows. Nice. Um, and then we find out that Annette Benning will be playing a tennis pro in a new series on Peacock and that they bought the shirt for her to wear. Um, so I have a friend right. who's pretty high up at Peacock and She's like, I'll go through the dailies and I'll look to see if I can get it and, <laughs> and send it to you. Um, nice. So I think that's something we're really excited to do and aspire to do more of that. Nice. Um, and, but other than that, I mean, I think it's really cool when we see our friends playing tennis or playing pickleball and um, they see people, random people wearing our clothes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's like a John McEnroe shirt, um, that, that that there's no connection to. We don't know these people, but you know they're either buying it online through Tennis Warehouse. Actually, my cousin, who used to is um used to teach at the, the tennis club that Josh and I played at in Chelsea. He was a, a teacher at Total Tennis in Saugerties, New York. He actually took over the arts and craft fair from our from from his dad and uh, my uncle. Um, he took a picture of one of our hats at the U.S. Open. That's awesome. And said he's supporting us. And I wrote him and I said, you didn't buy anything from me. Where did you get this? Like, how did you? And he actually bought it on Tennis Warehouse. So yes. I said, well, you could have come straight to me. But it was really <laughs> great that he's supporting. He's my cousin, but he's not asking for anything, you know, handouts. So right. that's really cool that they're supporting. But I don't know, Josh, is there any other stories I'm missing with people? You know, I sent, I'm a huge Howard Stern fan. I don't know if you listen to Howard Stern at all, Michelle. Not recently, but used okay. to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's obviously much bigger on the East Coast, but um, his sidekick, longtime producer, Gary Delabate, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Baba Bowie, is a big pickleball player, and they, they're always ranking on him how he loves pickleball. So we, we created this fun Baba Bowie pickleball club t-shirt, <laughs> sold two of them. <laughs> only, made, only made six, by the way, but... Uh, I sent him one. I'm waiting for him to to wear it, but that's cool. You know, he hasn't worn it yet. Yeah, uh -huh. the whole um, influencer marketing end of this business is a little challenging. You know, mm -hmm. it could obviously be costly too if you're really wanting celebrities and whatnot athletes to wear our products. We're I don't know. We don't feel like we we need to go there we're hoping we could just have enough organic growth and for regular people we yeah just love this and paddle rocket paddle sports to wear our stuff and to you know we are we are getting a, a brand ambassador um program out it's on our website now but we haven't like officially announced it so we're hoping we could you know really have you know a lot of sort of 
feet on the ground, people wearing it and promoting our, our products. For sure. Yeah, yeah, I actually have a pro that I think you should send your hats to because she okay. loves them or she loves um, trucker hats and she loves different stuff. And I was talking to her at BMP and I was like, you have to wear Ace the Moon. And she yeah, also, that. yeah, it's a easy fit. Um, and she likes to kind of do her own thing with fashion. So I'm sure okay. anyone listening might be able to figure out who I'm talking about, but um I will get, I will have yeah I'll give you her contact so you can send her maybe a few hats because I think she would it would work fluidly with her style. <laughs> okay, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, cool. Well, where can people learn more about the brand and shop? And aside from Thomas Warehouse, we know we can get it there. But it's, plug your socials and all of your stuff. Sure, uh, AceTheMoon.com is our website ace the moon la is our instagram we are beefing up the tiktok we do have a tiktok account we're, we're getting there okay we have some really fun content uh people will be able to shop through tiktok as well oh nice in the next couple of weeks and um racket doctor we're actually doing um a pop-up there next weekend two weeks from now nice okay um it's a great part of la called atwater village um rocket doctor's been there for i don't know 50 60 years I know forever years. um but there's a sunday farmer's market um i guess every sunday or maybe a couple of times, whatever but so we're gonna have a pop-up in front of their shop on november 12th um they've been amazing you know, to us, they were, with you guys, they were one of the first people to be like, "Oh, this is cool. We'll take we'll take some products in." Nice. Um, so, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And we will link everything in the show notes, so it'll be nice and simple and easy for people to find. And you guys are, it seems very easy to communicate. So if someone did have an idea or wanted to reach out or do a collab or do a team yeah. order, reach out and they're easy to work with, right? Right. <laughs> yes, 100%. Yeah, we'd love to do more collabs with anybody who wants some fun designs, take one of our existing designs and kind of make it their own. Um, we're all yours. Yes, awesome, yeah. cool. Thank you guys so much for chatting with yeah. me today and talking about East the Moon and your love for tennis and all the things and happy hitting. Thank you.